Hello and welcome to the Tech Simplified channel. My name is Rami Laisawi, and through this channel, I will explore different technology concepts and explain them in a way that is simple and easy to understand. After today's video, you'll gain a better understanding of what business process automation is and how to model a business process using standards like the business process and model notation. And we will see this in action through a demo using Red Hat's Process Automation Manager. Let's get started. So what is a business process? Simply put, a business process is a set of connected steps that are performed by a group of stakeholders in a specific order to accomplish a goal or a set of goals. Like the procurement process you see here, the process starts with an employee requesting a new laptop. The procurement team then sends to the suppliers to request an offer and a sequence of steps take place that should end up with the laptop delivered to the employee. Whether we're looking at a simple or a complex process, every process has stakeholders. In our example, the stakeholders are the employee, the purchasing manager, and the supplier. Every process has triggers, things that happen to cause the process to start, like an employee requesting a new laptop. A series of steps or activities, like requesting an offer or preparing a code, that lead to fulfilling a goal or a set of goals. In our case, laptop delivered to the employee. So what's wrong with this picture? Well, it involves a set of manual steps or activities which make it highly prone to human error. It depends on who is performing the process, so the decisions and the steps may differ from person to person. And obviously we risk losing the knowledge around the process if the process expert leaves the organization. We hardly have any visibility in the process, so we don't know how long each step takes or what is the status of a step in the process. This makes the process hard to track and it becomes difficult to figure out which steps take too long so that we can improve the process. Because there is little or no tracking, the process becomes very difficult to audit. And this is where business automation comes into play. It is all about the use of technology to fulfill a process with minimal human intervention, making the process as reliable and consistent as possible. Each step in the process is governed by a Business Process Automation System, or BPA for short. Most of the decision logic is configured in the system, so we get consistent outcomes every time the process is executed. And every step and decision is stored in the system to make tracking and auditing easy. And the first step towards process automation is to model your process. In the words of William Edwards Deming, if you can't describe what you're doing as a process, you don't know what you're doing. If you've never heard of Deming, he was one of the most important statisticians from the last century and is considered a leading figure in the field of quality management. The de facto standard for modeling a process is Business Process Model and Notation, or BPMN for short. It is governed by the Object Management Group or OMG. They are a non-profit standard consortium and the same entity that governs and maintains the Unified Modeling Language, or UML, the standard for modeling object-oriented systems. From the get-go, the main motive for developing BPMN was to formulate a simple and understandable language for modeling business processes that is based on graphical notation that kind of looks like a flowchart. This made BPMN very popular because it was very easy to understand by all business stakeholders, yet capable of modeling complex business processes. At the start of this video, I said that the process is a sequence or flow of activities with the objective of fulfilling a specific goal. In BPMN, a process is modeled using graphical elements. For example, activities are modeled as a rectangle with rounded corners. In our procurement process, those activities can be purchasing manager requests an offer, supplier prepares a code, the system reviews and evaluates the offer. 
Events are modeled as circles, like the start and end event, while gateways are modeled as diamonds. Gateways determine which path our process will take. All elements are connected using sequence flows. As you saw, BPMN is made of certain elements or shapes that comprise its visual language. There are five main groups of shapes. Flow objects define the behavior of a process. These include events, activities, and gateways. The order of activities is shown by connecting objects. These are the lines that show sequence and message flows, as well as associations. Pools and swim lanes represent major participants in a process. So a pool represents a major participant, like a company or an organization, while swim lanes show the participants within the pool. Swim lanes help define who is accountable for each step of the process. Artifacts are used to bring an added level of detail to your BPMN diagram. Annotations allows the modeler to provide more description for the parts of the process that require more explanation or comments, while a group object helps organize elements that are related to each other. This is a logical grouping mainly to provide better visualization of the process and does not change the behavior of the process itself. And finally, a data object can represent data placed in the process, data resulting from the process, or data that needs to be collected, or data that must be stored. Let's cover flow objects in a little bit more details. Events represent something that happens during the course of a process. There are three types of events, start, intermediate, and end. Each process in a BPMN must begin with an event called a start event. A start event is represented as a circle with a thin border, while an intermediate event is any event that takes place between the start and the end of a process. Intermediate events are represented as a circle with double borders. End events signify the end of a process or a particular path in that process. End events are represented as circles with a thick border. Events can contain an icon in the middle to define how the event is triggered. For example, a timer event is triggered when the timer expires or at a specific date. Other triggers include messages and signals. Activities are the building blocks of a BPMN diagram. They represent something that is performed during the process. A task is an atomic activity that cannot be broken down to finer level of details. While a subprocess is a compound activity that represents a collection of other tasks and subprocesses. There are different types of tasks, either defined by an icon at the top level corner of a task element. Typical examples are a user task where a human performs a task with the assistance of the business process automation engine. A script task is executed locally within a business process engine using a script language that it can interpret and execute. A service task uses an external service to execute the task like a web service call. A business rule task represents communication with a business rule engine inputting information and receiving output of calculations from the business rule engine. So in our procurement example, requesting an offer and preparing an offer are user tasks. Evaluating the offer is a business rule task. Calling an external service to update the enterprise resource planning system is a service task, while internally logging that the offer was rejected is a script task. The last type of flow objects is gateways. Gateways are represented by a diamond shape. As implied by the name, they are a gating mechanism that either allows or denies passage through the gateway. They are decision points that are used to control the flow of a process by either diverging sequence flows or converging sequence flows. There are different types of gateways. The most commonly used are exclusive gateways, 
parallel gateways and inclusive gateways. Let's now see an example to understand the difference between them. In this example, we have a user task that allows a user to select an item. The item can be a laptop or a phone or extended warranty. Once the selection is done, the flow moves to an exclusive gateway, which diverges the flow to one of the possible options based on which condition will be evaluated to true first, laptop selected, phone selected, or warranty selected. And the process flow converges at another exclusive gateway, where it moves to a task to deliver the order. Now let's see this process in action. The process starts with the user task to select an item. Here I will select a phone and mark the task as completed. And to review what happened in the process, Red Hat Process Automation Manager offers a process diagram view to visualize the process progress. The path that was taken is highlighted in a gray color. Here we can see that the process started at the Select Items User task, through the gateway, and then to the option I selected, and continued till it reached the end event, Order Delivered. Now let's see how the process behaves if we select two options together. And remember that we are using an exclusive gateway. This time around, I'm going to select two items, a laptop and a phone, and complete my task. Let's go to the diagram to check the behavior of our process. So because we are using an exclusive gateway, the process proceeded exactly the same as before. The first condition that was satisfied is the only path the process will follow. So again, the process started at the select items user task, through the exclusive gateway, and then through the sequence flow that had its condition evaluated to true first. Now let's consider a scenario where I want to give the user extended warranty whenever he selects a laptop or a phone. So to do that, I added a parallel gateway just before our exclusive gateway. This allows the process flow to branch to the extended warranty option and in parallel, the flow will proceed to the exclusive gateway to see whether a phone or a laptop were selected. Let's see this in action. So just like we did before, at the select items user task, we will choose the phone option and complete our task. And if we check the behavior of the process this time, as expected, it progressed from the select items user task to the parallel gateway where it branched to the extended warranty option and continued to the exclusive gateway. And in the parallel branch, the process progressed to the exclusive gateway and then to the option we selected and the flow converged at the exclusive gateway, then moved to the deliver order task and the end event. Now, if we go to the logs tab to inspect the behavior further, and let's filter the logs to see the nodes entered event only, here we will notice something interesting. The deliver order task and the order delivered end event were actually triggered twice. And that's because a convergent exclusive gateway does not synchronize incoming sequence flows. Meaning when the incoming sequence flow from the phone node triggers the gateway, without waiting, it will trigger the outgoing sequence flow to the deliver order task, which in turn will trigger the end event. In the same way, the incoming sequence flow from the extended warranty node will trigger the gateway, and it will again trigger the outgoing sequence flow, triggering the deliver order task and the event node one more time. To change this behavior, we can change the type of the gateway from an exclusive gateway to an inclusive gateway. By doing that, the inclusive gateway will synchronize between the incoming sequence flows, meaning that once the incoming sequence flow from the phone node hits the gateway, it will wait for the second incoming flow from the warranty node before it goes ahead and triggers the outgoing sequence flow towards the deliver order node and the end event node. Let's try the new flow, and while we're at it, let's replace the divergent exclusive gateway into an inclusive gateway so we can test the behavior of choosing multiple options at the same time. So this time in my user task, I'm going to select both options, laptop and phone, and complete my task. Now if we check the process diagram view one more time, we'll see that indeed from the parallel gateway, the process branched into two parallel sequence flows, 
one of them went to the extended warranty node as before and the parallel branch went to the new inclusive gateway and because we selected an inclusive gateway this time both options were triggered the one for the laptop and the one for the phone and all three sequence flows converged and the convergent inclusive gateway which synchronized all incoming sequence flows before triggering the outgoing sequence flow to the deliver order node and finally to the order delivered end event and this time if we go to the logs and again filter the logs by the node entered event type we'll find that the deliver order task and the order deliver end event were indeed triggered only once so in this example we've seen the behavior of the different types of gateways a parallel gateway will always branch to all outgoing sequence flows on the contrary with an exclusive gateway only one sequence flow will be triggered while for an inclusive gateway all outgoing sequence flows where the condition is satisfied are triggered and when it comes to converging gateways a parallel gateway will synchronize between all incoming sequence flows meaning it will wait until all possible sequence flows hit the gateway before triggering the outgoing sequence flow on the other hand an exclusive gateway will trigger the outgoing sequence flow every time an incoming flow hits the gateway meaning there is no synchronization between incoming sequence flows with an exclusive gateway and finally an inclusive gateway will synchronize between all incoming sequence flows for the path activated by the divergent gateway before triggering the outgoing sequence flow the example you just saw was executed in Red Hat's Process Automation Manager, which provides a vast array of capabilities and features to its users. Starting with Process Management Capability, which allows users to model and automate a business process using standards like BPMN. Decision Management allows users to author rules and link those rules to the business process to add the logic needed for decision making within the process. Also included is an AI constraint satisfaction solver that empowers organizations to solve resource optimization problems. Now I want you to think about what you need to be able to build a process like the one we just saw. You will need to model the business process, the events that trigger the process and the steps or activities needed to reach the process goals then author the rules that govern the decisions needed in the process. Model the data that will be manipulated by the steps of the business process and create the forms that will allow users to interact with tasks within the process. All of these assets are created in a web-based component called Business Central. Once you're done creating the process assets in Business Central, you can then package and deploy your process to the execution server, which takes care of running our processes. In today's video, we saw how business process automation addresses the challenges of a manual process, how it minimizes human error, bringing more reliability to the process. And when you automate a business process, you can expect consistent outcomes every time you run the process, you get better visibility into your process, and clarity about the tasks involved and the time it takes to run every task. So now you can enhance the process by identifying and eliminating bottlenecks. With business process automation, every detail of the process is recorded and this information is readily available at all times to demonstrate compliance during audits and reducing regulatory risks. We also took a quick look at the business process and model notation standard and how flow objects, connecting objects, pools and swim lanes, and artifacts work together to make up BPMN's language. And we saw how easy it is to use Red Hat's Process Automation Manager to model a simple procurement process. In our next video, we will explore a sibling standard to BPMN, which is the Decision Model and Notation Standard, or DMN for short, and we will see how we can model the rules behind the business logic and execute those rules from our business process. See you next time.